The funding for this video is provided by the amazing members of our Patreon. Also contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Yeah, I started from PBS Kids. What you gonna do? Fight me? Anyway. Roll the video. Hey y'all, it's Hariana and I'm back with another video. Hi, hello, how are you doing? My name is Hariana and welcome to or welcome back to The Pirate Ship, also known as Harry Hooks Pirate Ship. I am the Catholic, you are not my first mate. I don't got the first mate because you wanna know why? Bring your ear closer to the speaker so you can hear me clearly. No one's worthy of being the first mate. If you're wondering why only one eye is finished, we're gonna get into that in a second. But hi, hello, how are you doing? My name is Hariana and I like to make content based on nostalgia and family and children's entertainment and all the issues that I find within those spaces. Now, I just filmed a video talking about my frustrations with Disney's Wish and I ended up being finished talking about the subject matter um, and my makeup still wasn't done. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to film another video and I looked at my list of topics that I've been wanting to talk about on YouTube for a minute and I picked one and we're going to be discussing. So if you're wondering why I have my face done, that is why. But anybody, if you guys watched my channel back in 2000, not 2000, who girl, not 2000, but if you guys watched my channel back in 2020 and 2021 I had expressed that I love the Parkers the Parkers has to be one of my favorite shows of all time it, it's my comfort series all right that's my shit I remember like when Moesha would go off the Parkers would come on so yeah I adore this series okay so Mind you, if I look a little uncomfortable right now, it's because this is my right hand doing my left eye. I'm right-handed. So we're gonna try to do it. <laughs> Why did I turn this way? Like that's gonna make a difference. Do it with the left hand. It's not gonna look as good as this side. This side don't even look all that good. My makeup never looks all that great anyway. We're just having fun. This is for the shits and giggles. But I have talked about how I love the Barkers, but I don't love everything about the series. And that's normal. You're not gonna like everything about just anything or everybody. There's a lot of celebrities that I like, but I don't like a lot of things they like. Like, come on. Now, this is a video that I've been working on that's been taking me much longer to get done than I expected. And it is a video talking about the video game class of 09. Hey y'all, editing Harry here. I just want to go ahead and let you guys know now that the class of 09 video is canceled. I'm switching it out for something else for my 10 year YouTube anniversary video, mainly because I'm reading the room right now and now is not a good time to posted that video because in the video game there is a school shooting scene and with the recent school shooting going on in Georgia now it's just not a good time and I don't know if I want to come back to this video at all but yeah just letting y'all know that yeah that video is not coming <laughs> Now, in the opening of that video, you're on Patreon, you see this already. The video's not done yet, that's why this one's out first before it. I mentioned how there was an episode of the Parkers that did not handle the subject of LGBTQ well at all. And this isn't just a problem with the um, Parkers. This is just a problem that I've noticed with a lot of 2000s and 90s sitcoms, but black sitcoms too just as well where they like treat like gay people as like the butt of the joke and it's like back then it was like for laughs and the kikis but now it's just like can we like talk about why this actually was harmful now let's go ahead and get started am i sitting here and i'm trying to cancel the parkers no absolutely not but if y'all can sit here and talk about all the problems that was in fucking sex in the city I can get on here and talk about the problems with the Parkers because there is just so much that I can say about this show. I've been debating on if I wanted to do like a series retrospective on it because I have seen the show probably like 10 times in full in my life because it's always on on reruns in the background. But 
what exactly was going on in this episode so outside of basically nikki being thirsty for the professor first of all nikki was too good for that bad i don't know why she kept chasing him but anyways like she was cuter she was too cute for him she was too hard working for him like the professor was a bum girl why are you embarrassing yourself over him but anyways nikki is basically like up the professors as usually but kim ended up moving into her apartment now the apartment that we see that she moves into is the apartment her and nikki live in for the remainder of the series now kim ends up getting a roommate and it is a guy he's a man the reason kim lets him be her roommate is because she basically wants to date him she finds him to be very attractive and she wants his attention now kim and it's like a recurring gag in the show where kim does things that are like out of desperation because she just don't like herself enough to be single like kim porker is a character that i just ooh, ooh, britain she was written much better when she was like a teenager in moesha but we see that kim is just doing everything that she can to try to get this man's attention and we see that this man is treating her like shit. he's messy he's actually a really terrible roommate but she keeps him around because she keeps thinking that she has a chance to date him. But it's obvious that he's pissing her off. He's doing things that she doesn't like. And all the whole time of the episode running, she is just doing everything that she can to just try to get a date with this man. Now, here's where it actually becomes a problem. I'm going to say the reason why. He didn't like Kim first before we get into what happened with the situation that really made her done with him and she finally kicked him out. The reason that we, ooh, I'm over here thinking that there's a mirror on this thing, it's not. The reason why he isn't really interested in Kim is because he's gay. That's it, like that's just simply the reason. He's just not interested in women. So first of all, nothing wrong with that. But the way the show revealed him being gay was just like, ooh, girl, we shouldn't have did that. I don't think we should have done that right there. Uh-uh. So how it revealed that he was gay, he ends up inviting his male friends over and the other men are gay too just as well. He invites them over and they also have a dancer come to the house. Now Kim doesn't care about the dancer being there. She's just more so mad about the fact that um, he is just not paying her attention. So we end up finding out that the dancer is, I'm trying to figure out the best way to say this without accidentally saying something that might be offensive, but I'm pretty sure the dancer is, um, I think the dancer might be a cross dresser, but it's revealed that the dancer is, I'm pretty sure he's a man dressed up in women's clothing. I think that's what it is. If you know, please comment down below. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I get shit wrong sometimes. It's okay. It happens. I just make sure I correct myself. But we end up finding out that that is like the big reveal of him being gay. Now, when Kim finds this out, she's mad. She's not mad about the fact that he's an ass roommate. She's not mad about the fact that he's ignoring her. She's mad about the fact that he is in to men so after that they have a talk and i know the man kind of feels a bit embarrassed because of the way kim's behavior was especially because it was done in front of his friends she kicks him out and because of that kim now no longer has a roommate and that is when nikki moves into the apartment with her 
if that sounded like a hot mess to you, it was. And this was something that I always thought was kind of weird, like watching the show growing up. But now like as time has passed and I've gotten older, I'm just like, ooh girl, that was not the way that you were supposed to handle that situation there. And it's just sad knowing because there are so many issues with 2000s media, just making fun of gay people for like the butt of the jokes. There's so many episodes of television shows about a woman being interested in a guy. And then next thing you know, uh, the reason the guy isn't interested in her is because he's into guys nothing wrong with that but i'm just like this is like an ongoing storyline and it happens in real life it happened to me before where a guy i like ended up being gay and wasn't interested in me like things happen but instead of it just being out like a oh this is just a thing that happens yada 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 it happens in life okay we can just move on from it it's often just played for shits and giggles and that's just the thing i was just talking about how 90s and 2000 media just loves to make fun of gay people I don't know if you guys are familiar with Neighborhood Story. I'll have the video linked down below. But Neighborhood Story is this manga that is written by Aizawa. It is one of her lesser known works. Everybody's more so familiar with Nana. And ooh, girl, this is, every time I try to do eyeliner, it just don't look good, y'all. <laughs> I would have the um, video link down below where I actually talk about how this shit irritated me. But there is a similar storyline in Neighborhood Story like it was done in the Parkers. But I think the Parkers, what it had done was significantly worse because it had a giant laugh track playing in their background too when it was revealed that the man was gay. But in Neighborhood Story, Mikako, that is our main character's name, she her mother ends up getting a assistant and he is this man that has like he's just like she calls him the sparkling foreigner and that name alone is problematic i don't know but he is like a very pretty person very helpful very kind and Mikako's boyfriend is just very skeptical of him. Y'all, I'm so bad at eyeliner. Ooh, it looks terrible. But Mikako, Mikako's boyfriend is just very skeptical of him because Mikako and him become friends and they grow close with one another. And he's just like, no, I don't like how Mikako's getting close with another guy. But then it is revealed that he is gay. Nothing wrong with that. Now, Neighborhood Story did homophobic stuff before in the manga. So when it did this, I was disappointed but not surprised but I didn't think it was going to be this bad. So when this part in the story had happened that it is revealed that his name is Seshi, I, I'd be so bad with pronunciation, when it is revealed that Seshi is gay, he basically hits on Mikako's boyfriend for laughs and it is like Oh, don't, 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 don't. We could have had that reveal of him being gay without it being made to be comedic because why it ended up irritating me so much is because he's holding his hand and obviously like trying to flirt with him. He's like, hey, um, I like dudes, come here. And I was just like, can we not do like the straight, the gay guy being predatory to the straight man thing, please? Like, please don't. Can we not do this shit, please? No, I these manga in general have problems with say, oh, <laughs> well, homophobia. I haven't seen the shit that Sailor Moon did. It's just like, can we get some decorum, please? Can we absolutely get some decorum? This, every time I try to do wings, it just don't look good. This side, I like that side better. I don't know. Y'all know I ain't the best with makeup. I don't care. It's just 90s media just has a problem with always just wanting to make fun of gay people and just putting up the butt of the jokes. And the reason why it just is bothersome to me with them being the butt of the joke has to do with the fact that that is usually the only time that you're going to see a gay person in this media. That is the only gay representation that you usually see. Because nowadays, when we have stuff like this, it's usually created by gay people themselves but they're not like the side character or the guest character they're usually the main character they're part of the supporting cast one thing about 90s and 2000s media when it comes to gay people is that the shows simply just bring them in because they are gay that is usually the only thing to their characters is that they're into the same gender or multiple genders and then half the time after that situation is done they're usually no longer brought up because like even with neighborhood story we did not see Seshi that much after that. We really didn't. He was there because he went to London with Mikako. But like after that, we barely even saw him anymore. But also like in the Parkers, because the Parkers, that is not the only time that we have seen them just bring in a gay character simply because they're gay. And then we don't see them really do much of anything with it after that. That is the only time we really ever saw that boy in the show. 
that is the only time we have seen them. And I know 16 ended up doing this too because there was an episode where Caitlyn had a crush on a guy and the reason is because he was, the reason he didn't like her is because he was gay. And it's just like that usually be the only time they're brought into these series and that it just goes off and that's that. Give me a minute. We are going to fix this first and then I'll be back with closing out this video and we'll be done. Y'all, I'm trying my best when it comes to makeup. I'm not the best, okay? But we're trying, that's all that matters, y'all. She's trying her best and that's what we're doing this year. We are trying our best. And I can sit here and talk about the Parkers for a minute. I can sit here and talk about Neighborhood Story for a minute. I got a whole hour long video talking about Neighborhood Story. I love the Parkers, but like as many of those UPN black sitcoms, there's just aspects in them that didn't age all that much. Age well all that much, and it's okay to acknowledge it because there's things about like my favorite Disney Channel like shows that didn't age all that well either. It's because nowadays people try to act like Y2K was all glitz and glamour and there was a lot of darkness behind that glitz and glamour, okay? Okay, we're done with that. Um, first, we're gonna do blush and then highlight. I think we're gonna do highlight first. Um, ooh. I guess it's like to take a smaller brush with the highlight right here. Ooh, that mirror is dirty in there. Let me get mine. I take like a smaller brush with highlight. This is a Selena MAC highlighter, by the way, um, to go over like under my eyebrow. Because I don't know, for some reason I like doing that. Y'all, I didn't even do my eyebrows today. That's how much I was just, uh-uh. Because it took me back to do the fucking eyeshadow. Now we're gonna go in with Okay, I think I need to do the blush first before I do the highlight because I like the highlight to be all over my face. Um, <laughs> and I think we kind of get into this age where people are like, oh my gosh, y'all complain about everything nowadays. Y'all so woke. Y'all this and then the third. It's not the fact that we're like trying to be like woke about these things. And I miss when woke actually meant something instead of people using it as another word to like be derogatory. It's just like us simply acknowledging that the things that we enjoy from the past just have problems. Like there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. There's a lot of media that I like, but I accepted that it has flaws. Like, come on, we can do both y'all think, but that's something a lot of people don't like to do. A lot of people don't like to think so. And like, I know that there are times where I felt like I have gone too far, where I felt like I was reaching about certain things. But also, even when like I do feel like I be reaching sometimes, I'm like, no, I think that was a valid concern. But yeah, like, I'm able to like, learn and acknowledge that I do be fucking up sometimes. When I be like, this is a mess. This is yada yada yada. But the Parkers was dead wrong for that shit. Neighborhood Story was dead wrong for that shit too, just as well. <laughs> Now, if you watched my last time I did makeup when I was talking about the Fraley Eye Parents, we are about to do my favorite part and that is the lips because this is the only part that I actually know how to do correctly. I usually take two lip liners. I usually take a darker one and then like a lighter brown. Mainly because, um, I don't know. Sometimes I be in the mood for the lighter brown or sometimes I be in the mood for the darker brown. Or sometimes I just want a color that's in between. But the color that's in between, I can't find that lip pencil. It makes no sense how I do lip pencils I can go through y'all. Cause I like do this like so much. This is like my default lip look. It's my default lip look. This isn't even my, my favorite part. It's this and then the gems and then we're done. Okay, we're going to do pearls on the face. We're going to do pearls. Mainly because I don't know where my other gems are. I was like, let's just do pearls today. Cause I don't really even care all that much. We're gonna do pearls. Last time I did pearls with a color like this, I did not like it. And then I realized it's because I forgot they had blush on the face. It was just not giving y'all. And I'm mad because I went to the bookstore that day. And I just, I had a mask on the whole time anyway. So nobody could really see my makeup like that. But I was just not feeling myself. I don't know why I be feeling like the lady from Shrek for some, like when I do liner, but I don't put on like, when I do liner, but I don't put on lip gloss. I be feeling like that lady from Shrek. Okay, hmm, hmm. I think it's the eyebrows. This is why I feel like a lady from Shrek. I don't have my lip gloss in here, y'all, so we're gonna run and get that and then I'll be back. Okay, we got the lip gloss. This is Megara from my shop, by the way. You can get it for 50% off currently at F. And I like this. I like to pour Megara with the lip liner because it just kind of blends it together and it makes it like this kind of 
dark pinky kind of color because it kind of reminds me of the little color that Becca wears. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. It took us two YouTube videos to get through this makeup look. That's why I think I need to start saving my makeup videos from when I have more things to talk about because it just comes to be splitting things in two. Like, I want to make an hour long video because it kind of takes me an hour to do my makeup and that's because I'm just not good at doing makeup. We forgot to put mascara on. One second. Honestly, I'm about to do another makeup look anyway, so it don't really fucking matter. Bye. I'm not doing that. Thank y'all so much for watching this video. I definitely do appreciate it. Uh, that's pretty much all I gotta say. I wanted to do the outro with my glasses on uh, because I don't know why. I do my makeup and then I put my glasses on and it just completes the look. It just completes the look, but it also hides the fact that I messed up behind the makeup. So yeah, it hides a lot of flaws. <laughs> all right, I'll shut up now. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Have a great day, night, whatever time of day you chose to watch this video. I'm just thankful that you watched it with the ads on. Alright, thank you. Goodbye.